And there we see PS4 Auto Lua Laps Hand 0.1. There we go. We got a payload copied over successfully. And there it is. Welcome PS4 Hand 2.1.5. Okay, to get started, what you're going to need is to own a physical game disc of one of these games right here. Now, there is obviously some demos in here, but you can't install them unless your PlayStation is on the very latest firmware, which none of ours is going to be. So I went ahead and I picked this game right here, and here is a picture of the box art. This one I actually bought even before this March 25th of 2025 date here. I think I bought this right around January and paid about $30, $35 for it. Now since then, this game is like $150 because a ton of people have called on. Next up, you'll want to come over to this other project which we're going to utilize, which is called PS4 underscore auto LL. It states that it auto loads HEN, the homebrew enabler, with Lua and the LAPS exploit for the PlayStation 4. Just come right over here, select download zip file. The last thing is right now, Gold HEN does not support this firmware, but it will very shortly. And so for the meantime, we can use Echo Stretch's PS4 HEN VTX. So just come right to the very latest version. And then just click on ps 4 hen vtxzip And then since we are going to use a jailbroken PS4, in this example, you will need to have Apollo Save Tool installed on your PlayStation 4. Now again, you can come over here to Releases and then just scroll down just a little bit and there is a PKG. So go ahead and download this one and put it on the root of a USB drive if you don't already have this installed. And you should have all of the files that you need. Okay, to kick things off, we are going to need to get jailbroken on an existing PlayStation 4. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using Apollo here instead of maybe these Discord bots from HTOS, is, is that what I have found is that a number of these bots, and there are multiple bots in there, but they're very much focused around using the original remote Lua loader. Now, coming back over to the project here, there is obviously a third option, which is using something called Save Wizard, but that one does charge. So you might have luck with using the Discord bot, but we're just going to go old school and do this with Apollo. Now, I am using a 9.00 system here, and as you can see, I've got gold in. Now, one of the very first things that you are going to want to do is to load up this application called Apollo Save Tool. Again, all links are in the description, but let's just go ahead and get that running here. And we need to go over to where it says user tools. And then we're going to go right here to activate PS4 accounts. Now, one thing that you will note here on mine is, is that I have went ahead and activated mine. But you should see yours located in here. And if you press X, then you should punch in your PSN account ID. Now, it's pretty easy to see if your PlayStation account is offline activated. One easy way is to obviously come here and log out of the PlayStation 4. And then when you get back to the login menu here, you can press options. And right there, if you see these two dialogues that says login, up here offline and online, then that does mean your account is offline activated. And you will need to get to a point to where you save the game. Now, one quick tip I'm going to throw in here is, is that if you are looking at one of the game menus, such as this one right here, which again came out of this game, Akage 2, I noticed that I obviously couldn't read any of this, but I did use the Google Translate app and it is very great because it provided a quick translation. And that's where I took this screenshot right here. So really, no matter what game you are using, you can use Google Translate to figure out what everything is stating. 
in case that Japanese is not your main language. And we need to go over and launch Apollo Save Tool. And we're going over to Hard Disk Drive Saves. And we're going down to our Akage 2 save. And we're going to go to Copy Save Game to USB. USB 0 here. And you can see it is now in the PS4 slash Apollo directory. Again, you will need to have a USB drive formatted and connected to your PlayStation 4. Now, if you go into this directory here, what you can see is, is that this is the decrypted save file that we are going to want to come back and import. So right here is the save game. And as you can see, it has the save game dot dat, the system dot dat, and a few other things, as well as the keystone. So let's take this over to the computer. Okay, so again, I just went right here and I downloaded the zip file here. Now, right here is the USB drive that I originally had plugged into my PlayStation 4. And right here is that Apollo folder. And then if we go inside the folder here, then you will see the contents that looks just like this. Now, the PS4 underscore auto LL main as a folder in there that's just called save data. So from here, you need to select everything and you need to basically drag and drop that into the folder and then replace all of the files in the destination, just like you see right here. Okay, and so now that we've got that copied over, now we need to open up the PS4 HIN VTX and we need to select the firmware that we're using so I am on 12.02 here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag and drop that to the root of my USB drive. And then we're just going to go ahead and give this a new name called payload.bin. Okay, go ahead and plug the USB drive into your PlayStation 4. So now we'll go back into Apollo Save Tool. And this time we will go to USB saves and you can see the save located just right there. So I'm going to select X and I'm going to select apply changes and resign. And as you can see right there, it states that the save has been successfully modified. So I'm going to press OK. And then we're going to go down here to where it says copy save game to hard disk drive. So we're going to press X there. So now that should be on the PlayStation hard disk drive. Now, a few more things you might want to check. You can go over here to view save details. Just make sure your account ID is located in there properly. And then the other thing, if you do just want to check and make sure that it did pick up all of the files, you can just take this quick option here where it says hex edit. And you can see right there, all of the files that we need are definitely included. Okay, so let's go back and let's go back again. And let's just go ahead and go to our main menu. We're going to go to settings here. And this time we're going to scroll down to application save data management. And we are going to go to save data in the system storage. And then copy to USB storage device. And we are going to select Akagi, which is just right here. And that date and time is exactly accurate as I just created it. And now we're going to go copy. And here it is copying it to our USB drive. So now we can go ahead and shut down this system and go ahead and fire up our PlayStation 4 on 12.02. Okay, so here we are on a 12.02 system. Again, I've got that disk now in my 12.02 system and if I go over here to settings and we scroll down to system system information right there I am I am on 12.02 okay so the very first thing that we are going to need to do is we're going to need to go back to the application save data management and this time we need to go to the one that states saved data on the USB storage device so we'll go ahead and we'll press X on this and we're going to take the option to copy to system storage. So before we go any further, if you have not been able to get to this screen right here, 
it does mean that your console has not been offline activated. Now, Apollo Save Tool does work on a PS4 12.02, but it is not supported. It actually tells you that once you launch it. So you might be able to do this after the fact if yours isn't offline activated already. To continue here, I am going to press X and looking at the date and the time, that is correct. So we're going to select copy here. And at this point, it should copy that over to my PlayStation 4's hard disk drive. And well, if everything went according to plan, I should just be able to hit X on this. And all of the exploits should just run. Okay, here we go. I can hear the disk spinning up right now. And there we see PS4 Auto Lua Laps Hand 0.1. There we go. We got a payload copied over successfully. And there it is. Welcome PS4 Hand 2.1.5. PS4 Firmware 12.02. Holy cow. That is absolutely amazing that we're able to do this on a 12.02 system. Okay, so I do have a game that we will give a shot, and this is a fake package game, and this one is called High on Life, which I actually recommend playing through this. I did beat this game already, and it was very, very fun. So let's just make sure this thing loads up. Okay, so we'll press a button, and we will go continue game here. Okay, here we are. It is working as expected here okay let's go back and we will try another game so let's select grand theft auto 3. oh actually that one needs a better caption card than the one that i've got connected so i'm just going to try another game here the grinch and do not ask me why i have this one on this machine okay we'll press x on this and we'll get into a game Okay, so here we are, and it looks like the Grinch game is working just fine. It actually looks like it may be a fun little game. I'm sure the novelty would wear off in a couple of minutes. Okay, so there is that game. So anyways, uh, the main thing that you're going to kind of get out of this is, is that your fake package games are going to run perfectly well. And then, of course, by doing this, you do have access to debug settings down here, which means you can go to game and you can go to package installer and you can, of course, install any of your fake package games, which is probably what the big majority of you kind of want out of this anyway. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, is that Whenever Gold Hen does come out, you can go back to that USB drive and then just rename the goldhen.bin file to payload.bin and it will start executing that one instead because it will copy it back over to the data folder on the PS4's hard disk drive. Now, another thing to note is, is that you do not have to keep the USB drive inserted after it copies over that payload.bin file. In future version, if you run this again, then it will just read directly off of the hard disk drive of the PlayStation 4. Now, one thing that I thought we should absolutely do is to go ahead and try this on our PS4 9.00 system. So I have went ahead and downloaded one of the latest releases of Gold Hen, and as you can see, it is listed here as goldhen.bin. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag and drop that to the root of my USB drive. Now, here was the existing payload.bin file. And we're just going to give this a different name. And I'm going to come and rename goldhen.bin to payload.bin. Okay, I'm going to connect this USB drive to my PlayStation 4 9.00. And so back over on my PlayStation 4 9.00, if we come right in here, we can see we're on 9.00. And I'm going to go ahead and run this game. And so it should do everything automatically for us. It should copy over that payload. So look right there, we can see firmware 9.00. 
payload copies successfully. And wow, we now have Goldian running on this thing. That is very, very sweet. And that was very fast. That is a very easy way for us to get jailbroken here. Yeah, I am very impressed with this working as it is. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!